Hello and welcome back to Pico TV. Today we have a multitude of topics based around the latest release of the CDA wagons in N-Scale, which are now available in the DB livery. In today's episode we will be taking a closer look at the wagons in model form, and we will learn more about its history and the preservation at the Bobman and Wentford Railway. Plus, we will build a diorama depicting one of the iconic scenes from the China Clay Railway based on the tidal estuary village of Golant. Our CDA wagons have been in production for many years, but this is the first time we have released them in the DB Cargo livery. As with all of our wagons, they have metal rimmed wheels, highly detailed brake rigging, plus very crisp branding and numbering. Also depicted on the models are the vents for aiding in removal of the china clay from the wagons. These models will also be released in previous liveries of EWS and ECC later in the year, so watch out for them. In order to get a true feel for these wagons and get a taste of their heritage, I felt it was a good idea to visit Golant to capture the essence of the place for my diorama. Unfortunately, the weather wasn't playing ball, but I got a really good opportunity to see what the moorings look like when the tide is out. I also took some sand samples and picked up a few pieces of green slate to help embellish the diorama. It also gave me a sense of scale because measuring the height of the embankment is nearly impossible. After exploring Gallant, I made my way to Bobman Railway to meet with Matt Simpson and see for myself the CDA wagons which have been donated to the railway. Matt, you've got some lovely CDAs behind you. Tell me all about them. Yes, so these are the CDAs um, at the Bobman and Wentford Railway. They were gifted to us by the uh, National Wagon Preservation Group who fundraised um, quite a lot of money to um, get these eight CDAs from DB. The wagons were in service from 1987 to August 2023. So they're not that old really in comparison to the stuff we have got here like the BT World Tank. There's eight of them. Um, originally we were gonna get six and a couple of spares, but we now hope to get all eight up and running back in their ECC livery as they were out shopped in 1987 and running behind our um, air brake diesel stock. At the moment, they're looking a, a bit groggy, perhaps, maybe a bit weathered. Tell me more about the condition and what you need to do. Yeah, so we, um, we're lucky enough to get eight of the wagons from the running fleet. So nearby at St Blasey, where DB's depot is, they've got a wagon works there. That's where all the CDAs were based for their entire life. Very few of them were still operational come 2023, and there was a much smaller running fleet. Um, the original bid that the wagon group put in was to get eight of the older wagons. That failed, sadly but they were lucky enough to get eight of the running fleet. So we know they're operationally you know, fit to run, but there was quite a lot of cosmetic work to do. So um, as you can see, they're not exactly looking their best. The DB livery is a bit faded. Um, unfortunately, China clay is a very corrosive substance. Um, needle gunning stuff, getting it repainted, replacing any metal that we need to. And then we can work on getting them cosmetically back to where they were when they were out shopped in 87. So these wagons are air brakes, which is unusual on the Heritage Railway because a lot of our stock is steam and sort of Heritage Diesel, which is all vacuum brakes. So we know a hell of a lot about vacuum brakes. Air brakes are very new to us, or we have had air brake stock in the past. Um, and obviously diesels have straight air Veco brakes, but this is completely new to us. So it's been quite a fun challenge, task. Personally, because I love, I love it. It'll be amazing just operationally learning out how they work. And I really look forward to that. Fantastic. And what uh, locomotive are you hoping to put these behind? Oh, hopefully our class 37, um, 37142. Um, it's a Simbi Arbol livery at the minute, currently under overhaul, um, but will be out with us hopefully in the next year or two. Um, she, was one of the, she was the original 37 to come down to the southwest to um, haul uh, trains on the China Clay Circle. And was so lucky to have it here because it is, this is its home. It was on this line in, in the 70s and 80s. This is its railway. And to have CDAs behind it will just be such good fun. So having ticked all the boxes, I feel completely immersed in the history of the CDA wagons on the China Clay Railway. In order to build the diorama, I'm going to be using the Pico Streamline Code 55 concrete sleeper track, the NB39 plate girder bridge sides, and the MB40 grey stone walling sheet, plus the SK P01 River Valley back scene, which I will curve around the back of my diorama. 
not forgetting a wide range of ballasts, sand, static grass, all from the Pico scene range. I will use this array of paints and washes from WW Scenics and Vallejo, plus these weathering powders to weather the track bed and the CDA wagons. As you can see, my diorama has a curved edge that will form the back and allow me to curve the back scene around it. I've also carved out my mud flats and the different areas to different depths of the tidal estuary. I can also remove the bridge, making it easier to paint underneath. So now it's time to start painting my base coat. I'm using the Vallejo Textured Earth Acrylic Paint to cover all the foam. And it also happens to be a similar colour to the sand and gravel that I retrieved from the little harbour. Now I've painted the base coat, and whilst it's still wet, I add my cleaned and processed gravel, which I have graded using different size sieves. And I now have fine sand with a hint of pastel green, and small flakes which will act as pieces of rock. I'll begin sprinkling an even layer of the fine sieved sand over the wet paint like this. When I have covered all the areas of my harbour with sand, I will then use the PSG 13 pump action spray to fix it all into position. The PS 13 is not only good for static grass but it is excellent for holding fine gravels and sands in position. Next I apply to the deeper areas of the diorama the WWS brown clay mud to add some depth. Then I rotate the diorama to make it easier to access the harbour side and I begin to install some of the mooring lines. I'm using brown cotton and super glue for this. As you can see these are ropes which are attached above the high point and the low point of the harbour. The rope acts as a good attachment point for seaweed as well as a way of securing the boats at high and low tides. After attaching the cotton I cover it in some more PSG 13 and sprinkle some fine dark green foliage over the top to emulate seaweed. After adding the seaweed, I then start adding the PSG 27 and the PSG 35 self-adhesive tough strips to form reed banks at the high points on the mud banks. Then I add the gravel pieces along the edge of the railway embankment and at the base of the supports of the bridge. I fix the gravel in place with the PSG 13 pump action spray but using a pipette instead to liberally apply it all over. Then I take the Vallejo dark green wash and start staining the river bank green to emulate algae growth. And then I add some light grey wash to the bridge to tone it down and give it some age. Now it's time to add the Code 55 track and fix it in place using some super glue like this. A short while later, after the super glue has dried, I then apply the Pico Scenes ballast and cement into place using the WW Scenics ballasting glue, which I apply with a pipette and leave to dry overnight. The following morning, I then apply the PSG 10 basing glue to the railway embankments and using the detailer applicator with the larger diameter hopper to apply a mixture of 1 and 2 mm static grass. I then hoover off the excess grass and leave it to dry. From the weathering powders, I use the brake dust and apply it liberally all over the track bed with a soft fluffy paintbrush like this and then fix it into the track bed using hairspray. I've pre-made lots of different sea foam bushes to go on the embankments from a wide range of colours of foliage and scatters to emulate different types of bushes, and I attach them using super glue. Then I add some extra handrails that fit either side of the bridge, and I attach my small fishing boats from Harbin Hamlet. Again I leave the diorama overnight to completely dry before applying the water effects. I begin by mixing the deep cast water resin from WW Scenics and pouring it carefully over the diorama and wait for it to set.
then it's a simple case of adding the back scene and we're finished. And there we go. What a great way to commemorate these wagons and placing them on the diorama. The next time you're in Cornwall, why don't you check out the China Clay Railway and pay a little visit to the Bobman Railway. Then you too can begin your own journey in modelling this stunning part of the country with the Pico N-Scale CDA wagons. So until the next time, happy modelling!